Um, okay, good. Um, okay, my name's Mark Gillick. Uh, I was brought up in, uh, grew up in Katoomba, uh, going to Katoomba High, etc. And um, back in the, uh, I started <laughs> high school in 1980. And as we all know, that's when, you know, the, really the microcomputer age really blossomed and started going crazy. And um, at that time, there was a magazine called Talking Electronics. I actually do have issue 10 at home and had it out, and then of course I rushed out home with it. But um, issue 10 came out with the Talking Electronics computer um, that was a Z80 based machine um, and was very, very simple uh, in design, um, basically using a what, seven chips or so kind of thing to get going. It had a little onboard keyboard, etc. Seven. About nine. Se at night, yeah. Yeah. seven segments, etc. Does this work? Okay. And this is one. Of, this is the original one that I um, that I made. There has been some modifications, as you can see, but it still fires up 40 years on. Um, that I built uh, in a very dingy little underground place that my mum and dad allowed me to uh, set up as my electronics workshop. But even back then, um, I absolutely loathed the keyboard. The keyboard <laughs> was just appalling. Um, it was like. Just a lot of bounce. Uh, yeah, more bounce than yeah. anything. So even as a 14 year old, 13, 14 year old when it came out, I designed my own little keyboard oh. replacement, um, you know, with mechanical keys, took wow. out all the little spaces out of did it wide it up like this, and of course had my own uh, layout as well because I, I hated the layout yeah, as well. Used layout. To it, but it was just atrocious. So sense. so yeah, so I made a little keyboard attachment, etc. So that was the start of my modding etc now i do have quite a lot of i'll probably run out of time but i do have quite a lot of the extras that were built at the time including the 8x8 the power supply the non-volatile ram um, so i do have all of them in here uh, i'm pretty sure and epron programmer as well so um that was all back then and i actually made a program that was like a maze, uh, a, a two-dimensional maze that you would move around. And I was, this, the beginnings of some kind of, you know, basic game just using the 8x8s. Mm -hmm. And I had the non-volatile RAM, but for one, uh, I, I coded something badly and it just wiped all my program. There, there was no memory protection back in mm -hmm. those kind of things, wiped all my program. And I was so disheartened because this took me weeks, you know, to program hand, you know, in ASCII, in uh, hex code, etc. Very demoralised and, you know, there was other computer programs, computers that came out, I bought a ZX Spectrum and Commodore 64 and the tech got put aside. Um, in the background, I wasn't aware of this happening, uh, but in the 90s there was a um, Southern Cross made by Craig Jones, who apparently, I think he worked for tech, talking electronics as well. He made a uh, a clone. I'll be kind and say it was a clone of the uh, of the Tech One that kind of uh, moved things around a little bit, changed where the displays were, etc. But basically the same uh, design, the same keypad, using the same keyboard encoder, and only using six or seven chips kind of thing. So he did that. Um, now, and, but one of the really big things that uh, I really did appreciate uh, that he had on there was this connector on the side. Um, it, basically, it's a direct port. Uh, pin compatible to your Z80 straight on there and it would make expansion very easy because on the old Tech Ones, as you can probably see, every one of these things relied on you putting it into this poxy little 24 pin expander in there and stacking them on top of each other and stuff. Absolutely atrocious, but anyway, so I'll grant him uh, a kudos for adding <laughs> one of these things. So fast forward a few more years, I don't exactly know when, but Ben Grimmett. Uh, came out with a replicate. You got the rights to uh, 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 the rights to replicate um, the Tech One D board, and this is it here. So three actually. Oh. No, that's one D. Yeah, my eyes are blurry. Yeah, no, one D. Right. Uh, it's just that I've done a lot of mods as well. So um, the Tech One D came out, and he was doing the replicas of the board, etc. But again, it hadn't actually changed that much, believe it or not, from the Tech One from the original one. Um, Two, a bit over two years ago, Craig Jones, John Hardy, who was the original designer, uh, one of the original designers um, of the Tech One, uh, and I got together in a little Facebook group and said, hey, um, I've got the rights to redesign. Um, Craig Jones got the rights from uh, Colin, who was the uh, uh, owner of the Talking Electronics. He got the rights from Colin to redo the Tech 
um, kind of thing. So we got together and started brainstorming what kind of things should we put into the new Tech One F. That didn't go so well. Apparently, um, engineers, and I'm no engineer by the way, I'm just a hobbyist, um, but apparently engineers are a little bit sensitive as to asking, giving directions, etc. That fell apart, um, and basically what I wanted, what I suggested to um, Craig, was that he add this connector to, at, at a minimum, to the Tech One F. Unfortunately, he didn't, um, and therefore he basically um, it really didn't add that much. It basically increased the RAM um, of the old tech kind of thing. So um, this one I've, I've ravaged it for parts kind of thing. But um, as soon as he brought out the 1F and he didn't have that connector, I took it upon myself to get in contact with Colin and said, Colin, would you mind if I did an update to the tech? And he said, I don't care, knock yourself out. <laughs> Got it in writing. So I said, I set to working now. Um, as I, sorry, Madeline? Man, lucky guess. <laughs> Good one. Um, Madeline uh, said, I also said to Madeline, um, it's quite scary coming up with a brand new design of anything. Um, when it's quite complex, if you fire it up uh, and it doesn't work, trying to figure out where it's not working is a nightmare. So what I started doing uh, that some of you on the Facebook group, and we've got a very active Facebook group, by the way, so. Um, so what I started doing on the Facebook group and various, um, various things was I started doing um, add-ons that will basically be the stepping stones and the building blocks of the Tech One F. Uh, and that would be, I think the first one was my favorite subject, keyboards, mm -hmm. okay. um, which was uh, done with an interface. So one of the things about the Tech One is that it's got a very specific um, keyboard encoder. Um, which is not impossible to find, but getting harder to find, and only allows for 20, 24 keys, something like that. 20 of them. 20 of them? Yeah. Uh, 20 keys, yes, thank you. 20 keys. Um, doesn't allow for anything bigger. So, ever for the last two years, I've been hunting around for something that's really simple that allows us to do a QWERTY keyboard kind of thing. I found, uh, after many searches, etc., I finally found a design, a circuit that's open source, um, that apparently the Spectrum, ZX Spectrum uses, it's just a keyboard scanning, you know, eight by eight keyboard scanning. So uh, I adapted it, modified it, and created a little board and made the keyboard that goes with it after, and I don't have it. There it is. Um, after creating a, firstly for the 1D, I created a little adapter that gave us that port finally. And so it gave us that finally, and I, labeled it the Z80 bus. Um, I then made a little board that would attach to it by cables or direct connect into it kind of thing. And then you can very easily start adding extra ex expansions onto it kind of thing. Keyboard was first. Next was a trial but failure and then I tried again, was a memory expansion. Now, the thing about anything that we wanted to do with the 1F was to make it still relatively simple and backward compatible because the problem was that Ken Stone came out, I don't actually know when, I'd have to ask him, but not that long ago, maybe five years ago, uh, maybe a bit more, he came out with the Tech 1D and it was one physically quite a bit larger than the old 1D, so it wasn't exactly compatible. He tried to make it backward compatible with all the ROMs. I think he had some people had success, I didn't get it going. There was quite a few bodges that had to be done and this is only one of five boards that were ever made um, and I couldn't get it going, unfortunately. Um, Craig Jones apparently spent a lot of time and got his going, mm. so, um, but that's because he's a real engineer, not me. <laughs> um, so, for me, the, uh, the, um, the writ, the, the, the aim of the Tech 1G had to be um, the same physical size it had to be still relatively simple. Um, the chip count had to be as low as possible uh, and it had to be 100% backward compatible. But we still wanted more memory because the first, I didn't think I said it, the first one only had 2K. Um, <laughs> only had 2K, 2K ROM and a 2K RAM, expandable to 4K. Um, yeah, um, and then, but I wanted to go, now the Tech 1F went up to 8K RAM kind of thing. But 
you know, nowadays 32 KB M chips, SRAM chips are not expensive, they're cheap as. So I wanted to get a 32 K RAM. I wanted a bigger ROM because all these languages that people were making, including John Hardy coming up with fourth or Firth or something like that, um, and various other things. So you need to be um, 8K minimum ROM, um, and then you know 32K RAM, but still be backward compatible, as in literally you can, on the 1G, unplug, um, you know, pop in a 2K RAM, and I'll show you this afterwards, I won't throw it up now, you can pop in a 2K ROM in there, change a couple of jumpers, and you can be running the same ROM that's in the Tech One. Um, so it's 100% backward compatible, yet it has 16K ROM, 32K RAM, and all these extras that I designed. So that was the memory card that I designed. I finally got it working. So you can actually, with a number of all these modules that I've created, you can turn your old Tech One into a Tech One G, believe it or not, it's, it's all that is capable. Uh, an LCD, that there was a that d d display and tape um, card that was made by Someone yeah. help me, what's his name? Robert, Robert, Jim, Jim Robertson, thank you. Jim Robertson made a, 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 a LCD and his Jmon was uh, monitor, was based with an LCD. So this is yet another thing that you can plug in on top of, or I'll do it on top of the 1F, but basically you plug it in, I'm not gonna bother lining it up, but you basically plug it in on top. Um, and basically all these modules I started pulling together, um, a month or so ago, a bit more actually, and that's what comes up with the 1G. And one of the things that was key to me is also I wanted to have real keys. Mm -hmm. I couldn't stand the, uh, you know, the dicky little keys that anymore, so I put in real mechanical low profile keys. Um, this isn't standard, but I've had um, one of our co-developers, we made a, get, get a new uh, little Facebook group with John Hardy, um, Craig, Craig, not drones. That would be funny. Craig Hart. Hart thank you. Craig Hart, uh, Brian Chia, uh, who's very active on his uh, Z, uh, Ready Z80 uh, channel, um, and myself into a little group, and we just started designing and what, you know, how, how should it be? What should the 1G look like kind of thing? So as much as possible, we've tried to keep the design fairly similar. We've had to obviously put in an LCD module, but okay. it plugs off and, you know, we tried to keep the roughly the same kind of layout but with better keys and uh, it's got the proper connector out the side now you can expand it mind you i've gone overboard and i've added extra expanders here and here <laughs> and uh, the keyboard is now also included as well so the, the expansion and it's got a joystick interface so um, there's quite a lot has been added to it um, and the good news was that it fired up first try um, so but that's only because i worked on individual modules along the way. This took me three, two iterations. Uh, the LCD module took me three iterations, even though you, know, you wouldn't have thought it's that complex, but there you go. Uh, keyboard, keyboard was two iterations. So there's quite a few iterations of the individual modules, um, but then really the 1G was just pulling it all together and yeah, thank Christ it worked. So there you go. So that is my show and tell and oh, when for sale. Take when for sale. Yeah. Um, the second beta version is going to be going um, probably going to printers on Sunday like it's uh, I, you know, just got a few more traces to redo yet again because we have we have found some minor physical issues with the 1G including like switching swapping this when, when you have the GLCD which is the what Brian um, developed when you have that plugged on top, it means you can't get to the switch to swap ROMs kind of thing. So moving those around, and what else was there? This speed connector, there's another another expansion for the lights. Oh, surely I included it. No. Uh, uh, Craig Jones also made some cool um, additions for his, um, for his um, Southern Cross. There's a connector on the top of there that I copied it well. Actually, the Tech One had it first, but anyway, it's actually wired in now. There's actually wires going to that. So you can connect an 8x8 display very nicely, cleanly there, but then the switch got in the way of it kind of thing. So we're moving that to down here, this to over here. I think that's about it. So there's a little bit of rewiring, but very close to being done. So if we go to the printers, uh, they'll be here following week. We've got to do some beta testing. 
uh, that'll see us through to what mid September, um, and then we should be able to print. I, I, I think first week of October we should be ready for the printing. Or, you know, if anybody is particularly interested in uh, doing being part of the beta two, um, but you have to promise to actually build it and give us feedback. So it does mean that there's a fair bit of time involved. This you know soldering up this many. Uh, connections, <laughs> I'll tell you straight, takes a good not, six to eight hours. Unless you've got a wave soldering machine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, don't know. I, don't, I don't have one of those, but soldering by normal means uh, does take quite a bit. Um, obviously, a lot of the parts are reusable. You'll be able to use it on the finished process. But I actually think I'm very confident that the next beta will be it. You know, it's really just physically moving things around. We're not changing any of the electronics as such. So, Thanks, um, <laughs> 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 um, but you know, so it's um, it should be the final thing anyway. But if there is any problems and you you know want the final release, obviously you'll probably have to reuse, spend some money on sockets and you know those kind of things. But if you use sockets wisely, you don't have to. You know, you can reuse your displays and um, you know the keys would probably the keys the good keys, not perfectly cheap but you know so there is some investment that you would have to put in and you know but if anybody is keen to uh, be involved with the beta 2 process I, I think we're going to get a run of only 10 boards um, I'm happy to talk to anyone that's um, that wants to do that so um, but yeah you have to make a commitment and a promise that you will actually build it and give us feedback quickly so okay I usually would love to take questions, but because... Um, no, we'll do that later. Yep, because we'll I, I know that there's going to be a lot of... I've got a lot of questions, so we'll, yeah. we'll hit you up afterwards. So, um, so, so. Thank you very much for your time, everyone.